Okay, so these are the notes for 7.3. Um, we've been doing confidence intervals around the population mean by using a sample of, of an average, right? We get a sample mean. We can create a bubble with confidence of 95 or 99 or 90 percent confidence around that sample mean to say that, that the real mean, the population mean, is in this window somewhere. We want to do the same thing when data is not given as a mean but maybe given as a proportion. A proportion you can think of as just a percentage. It's what portion of the population fits a description. So it might be something like a 30 percent of, uh, of people in Kimberly High School have uh, blonde hair. And so we want to calculate is that, you know, we might do a sample and come up with that 30 percent, but what's the true population proportion? So a couple of things that we need to indicate first, P is the true population proportion. That's the actual uh, proportion or percentage. Uh, this P with the funny looking symbol over the top, that carrot key over the top, it's called P hat. That's how we read that. And P hat is the sample proportion. So I take a sample of 100 students out of Kimberly High School and I get, you know, 30%. Well, that's P hat. What's the true population per proportion of students who have blonde hair? It's probably some other number, but it's near that. Um, the way we calculate p hat is the number of successes divided by the number of samples. It's just what proportion or what percentage said yes. And q hat would be its converse. It's the opposite or what number of uh, unsuccessful attempts are there. To calculate the confidence interval for proportion, we take p hat plus or minus the z of alpha over 2. That means we're doing a Z interval. Now we can't do the same Z interval test that we did on the calculator in previous sections. We'll get to that towards the end of this. But alpha over two is because we're cutting it on each tail, right? The the if I want a 95% confidence, then I've got two and a half percent on each end. That's what the Z of alpha over two is. We times that by p hat times one minus p hat. But one minus p hat, this piece right here, you could replace that with just q hat. So you know, if you got 70, or th oh, the earlier problem I said 30%, 30, so we 0.3 times 0.7. And of course, n is the number of people in the sample size. Uh, really what we're doing is we're coming up with a p okay, hat, and we're saying that the true proportion is going to be somewhere in this margin of error. Okay, right? We've been talking about this bubble that we make around our estimate so we can cover our bases and make sure we have everything. So the first thing we need to do is, how do you calculate p hat and q hat? So a recent survey of 150 households, that would be n, uh, 54, that would be x, sorry, said that they had central air conditioning. Find p hat and q hat, where p is the p hat is the proportion of households that have central air conditioning. So p hat is going to be 54 over 150, which I believe comes out to. 36.36. Okay. Now Q hat has to be its opposite that gets us to 100%. And so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract that 0.36 from 1 and get 0.64. We get that. We get that. There's our P hat, Q hat. Um, now being able to go forward and, and so let's find the confidence interval. Okay. To find the confidence interval, we're going to have to use that whole formula. A couple things we need to know. We're going to go ahead and need to calculate. Um, so for finding p hat, you know, we take the number that said yes, 323 over 1404. Um, we also need to know <coughs> the z of alpha over 2. Now, a 90% confidence. means that there's 5% on each end. So when I go to the Z table, I'm looking for 0.05 in my table. It's going to be on the negative side, but looking for 0.05 to give me 5% on a side. I get 0.0505 and 0.0495. So these are my 5% values. We never want to round too aggressively. We want the tail to be small. Uh, so we get a minimum of 90% confidence. So we're always going to go with the smaller of the two values, the 0.495. So it's 
Now, the formula has a plus or minus, so we're going to go ahead and put in that z of alpha over 2 is plus or minus 1.65. That's what we'll end up using. I also need to know q hat. Oh, shoot, I didn't finish calculating p hat. Uh, let's calculate p hat out a little bit with a calculator, and then we'll find q hat. And of course, n we know is 1404. Okay, um, so p hat. Calculator up here. Uh, three, uh, 323 divided by 1404 is 0.2301, which makes Q hat 0.7699. Yeah, that should work. Um, and now I can use the formula, which says P hat. 0.2301 plus or minus my z of alpha over 2, 1.65 times the square root of p hat, 0.2301 times q hat, 0.7699, all divided by n, the sample size, 1404. I'm going to pause this for just a second and go shut that door. Okay, so now we just need to evaluate this to create the bubble around our true proportion. So not p hat, but p, the population proportion, is going to be between these two values. So I'm going to grab my calculator. 2.301, or 0.2301, dang it. 0.2301. We'll do the minus first, because i got to do plus or minus. I'll do the minus so I can get the left side. Minus. 1.65 times the square root of. I'm going to be a little careful here and probably do parentheses 0 0.2301 times 0 0.7699, still inside the square root, divided by 1404. And I'm going to get 0.2116. That should be my smaller side because that was my minus side. And let's grab our calculator again. I'm going to arrow up and I'm going to just edit that one minus to a plus sign and press enter 0.2486. While the estimate was 23%, we know that the true population proportion is somewhere between 21 and 24, almost 25%. That's where we'd expect it to be, with a 90% confidence that it's in there. If I want more confidence, that region's going to get bigger. So if you want 99%, it's just going to widen. The other thing that we need to do sometimes is determine how big of a sample do I need if I want to be able to make claims about my, um, my margin of error and uh, my confidence later on. You know, if you want to make a 95% confidence test, well, you, you really need to know how much data should you collect. Um, because of this formula up here, man, that the, the size of that data is going to impact things. So we want to know how big of a data set should we use. The sample size needed will equal the z of alpha over 2 divided by the margin of error squared times p hat q hat, where e is the margin er of error. That's the percent error we're allowing. So let's look at a really simple example of this. Okay, A researcher wishes to estimate with 95% confidence the proportion of people who own a home computer. Okay. Um, a previous study shows that 40% of those interviewed um, had a computer at home. That's going to be p hat, it would be 0.4. That's from a previous test, but it's a number. And q hat will be 0.6. If you ever don't know what p hat and q hat are because you don't have a previous study to go off of, you're going to use 0.5 and 0.5. You just call it a 50 50. Okay. Um, we want to know n. And our margin of error, it says we want to be accurate within 2%. That's 0.02. The only thing left is to find the z of alpha over 2 for 95% confidence. Again, if I go to the z table, I'm looking for 95% confidence. That means there's 5% left off, which means there's 2.5% on each side. So I'm looking for 0 0.025, uh, which there's 0 0.022, 0 0.028. 0.025 is right here. Right here. 
here. Oh, I need to grab one. Sorry. Lost my marker. 0.025 is right here, which would be 1.96. If I come back over here, my z of alpha over 2 is going to be 1.96. So now the number that I need in my sample size is equal to z alpha over 2, 1.96, divided by the margin of error, 0 0.02, squared times p hat, 0.4, times q hat, 0.6. And all we need to do is just plug that into our calculator. 0.96 divide, oops, divided by 0 0.02. That needs to be squared and then times by 0.4 and 0.6 to give me 2304.96. We're always going to round this number up, so I'm going to come up with 2305. I need a sample that's at least that big in order to guarantee those, those parameters. Now, just like the other intervals can be done on the calculator, the prop the, the prop proportion z interval can also be built. So this is really what you did um, up here on this question. We talked about building the 90% confidence interval as a true proportion. To do that, we can use our calculator. Uh, we'd go into stat, we go to test, and it's actually it's not the z interval. It's a one proportion z interval. If I run that, you know that question had 323, 1404, and a 90% confidence. If I just press enter to that, it's going to give me that 0 0.21158, 0 0.24853. Those were my boundaries around the true um, proportion. All right, good luck, guys. I'll see you in class, and uh, hopefully uh, you're, you're doing well. See you later.